What's up? This is going to be an exciting and hopefully short video. Gotta love emulators. They're great. QEMU, awesome. Botchs or whatever it's called, they're great. Wouldn't be able to do this without them probably. It would take way too long. But it's about time we put our operating system on some real hardware. What we'll be doing today is installing all the tools we need to put Grub, a pretty common bootloader, into an ISO file. Then that ISO can be burned onto a USB or a CD-ROM. That, in turn, will serve as the bootable medium for our OS, and we can actually boot that USB drive or CD-ROM on real hardware. So what are we looking at today? Very few code changes, but we will see what has changed since OS 9. We have a few new dependencies to install on our system so that we can build this ISO file. We'll actually run the commands and burn the image, and then we'll see it booting. I'll show you it booting up on an old laptop that I have. So let's jump in. Like I said, not too many code changes. If you go to the repository, click the wiki, and we'll go on down to OS 10. We'll diff from the previous. And if we compare, you'll see only a few changes. First of all, I changed PCOS underscore kernel to PCOS.bin, whatever, that's semantic. If we scroll down a little bit, we'll see that our run command, and this is not related to this video, but it's pretty cool. The run command has been changed to add dash monitor standard input output. This is really cool because when you run QEMU, it pops up the QEMU window, but it also lets you use the terminal that you launched it from to view like memory or whatever. It's basically, it does a lot of what GDB does, so it's just less of a pain to launch it. Pretty cool stuff, maybe we'll get into it in the future, but it's cool to dump registers live and see what's going on. You can really dive into what's happening in the system. Great debugging tool, but we're not debugging today. We're doing real hardware. So most of our changes are on this ISO command. Whatever I was doing before was garbage, so I just deleted all that and created a directory called build slash ISO boot grub. Everything in the build directory is throwaway, obviously. And then we have an ISO directory that's going to be the contents of our ISO. And then on that little ISO, you can think of it as its own system. We're going to have boot slash grub, and we're going to copy our grub config file into that directory. We're also going to copy our kernel into that directory. And then we're going to use this grub make rescue command. Our output will be build slash pcos.iso, and our input directory there is build slash iso. So that's a pretty cool command. It basically does all the heavy lifting for us. It creates a grub iso that will point to your multi-boot kernel. The bottom here we have grub.cfg. If you've ever poked around in a Linux system that uses grub to boot from, these can get very long and complicated. However, ours is extremely simple. Three lines, I don't think we could get any simpler. We just have a menu entry, pcos, and you'll see that pop up later. And all it does is say, oh, we have a multi-boot kernel, and it's located here on our ISO, or our system. In this case, it is an ISO. That's all for code changes. So I mentioned some new dependencies. What the heck are those, and how do I get them? If you're not on Ubuntu or Debian or something like that with APT for your package manager, I can't help you. If you are, though, all we're going to do is type sudo apt install grub pc bin and x or ISO. Those are the two tools that we need. Mine's already installed, but try installing those and then we'll be able to run the commands in the make file needed to create that ISO, namely grub mk rescue. The boring part's out of the way, let's do something fun. We're gonna do make ISO and it's burning and for me it worked. Hopefully it did for you too. Check it out, if you do ls build, you should see pcos.iso right there. If you happen to be comfortable where you're at right now, you might not want to move, might not want to go grab a CD or a USB and get up and find a computer to try it on. You can test out your ISO yet again with QEMU. It has support for these ISOs, so you just do dash CD-ROM build slash PCOS.ISO. Once that happens, look at that. You got a grub bootloader prompt there, and there's the PKOS label that we defined in the config file. If we just hit enter, it loads our operating system, just like OS 9. Now for the moment of truth. Let's try it on some real hardware. Voila! I have my USB drive burnt to a crisp. And here's a raggedy old laptop. I'm just going to plug it in. And turn it on. And we'll go for the escape key. And boot device, F9. Go for the generic flash disk, hit enter.
a little slow, a lot slower than uh, the emulator. And here we go, we have our grub menu, PKOS, and we'll just hit enter, hope for the best. Look at that, our code ran, that's really cool. Real piece of hardware, not quite bare metal, we had grub's help, but still pretty cool. That's all I had for this vidski, thanks for watching, see you for the next one.